Hello people, my name is Ginny Metherall and I'm a fourth generation witch. Yes, I know! Last week I did a video on the five things I wouldn't do at Halloween, or as we call it, Samhain. And so as a follow-on, I thought I'd tell you the five things that I will be doing this Halloween on that beautiful witch's Sabbath. Now, just before I tell you all about the five things I'm going to do for Halloween, I just want to give you a quick word from our sponsor, Rue and Vervain, because they have sent me a box, and I've no idea what's in the box, and so I'm going to open it and we'll have a look together. And the first thing I notice is how beautifully packaged. And look what they've given me. So let's open this and see what it says. Seraphina herself has written to me. How glorious. Dear Ginny, I admire your channel, so I was personally thrilled to send these to you. I'm including a copy of my Wisdom of Pooh tarot deck, which will be going on sale in November. There is a buy one, get one free, 50% off all Wisdom of Pooh items. Another little item you will find is our Pooh the Fool plush. All sales of the plush will go to support hurricane relief efforts here in the US. We have also managed to donate plushies to several children's hospitals here in Maryland to give to those little smiles stuck in the hospital. We hope you enjoy all our little tidbits. Many blessings. <gasps> That's so charming. Isn't that absolutely enchanting? Of all the things that they have sent me, I am so impressed by the quality of the cards in their Wisdom of Pooh tarot. The cardstock is really thick and they've got lovely gold leaf on the edges. They've also included in the pack these handy card size instructions so you can go tarot straight out the pack. The oracle cards as well have the same quality. I love the fact that they have this beautiful presentation, a great guidebook, and the oracle cards themselves are thick and luscious. And the artwork itself is inspiring, which I always find important in an oracle card. All available for purchase now or pre-order, and there is a 50% sale or a buy one, get one free. Go to ruinvervain.com. Thank you, Ruin Vervain. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing this Halloween is to make sure that the good folk, the fae, the fairies of this land are well catered for. Now I have a, a quite a few household fae. They tend to be attracted to places which have warding around them, like I have, which are safe from negative entities and are in the middle of the countryside, which is where I am too. That does not mean to say by any means that if you live in a town, you won't have fairies. Of course you can but they prefer being out in nature. Now I have within my household half sprites, I think there's a naiad in the pond, I have varying tree spirits around here, I've got some brownies and uh, uh, anyway a variety of fairies. They are here and this is their time too. They understand much more than we do the difference in the chaos that this seasonal change is going to bring to the energy of the world. And so therefore, what I like to do is to make sure that they are welcomed in my house. And of course, this means I will be leaving them an offering. The traditional offerings for this time are nuts, bread, ale or cider, apples and some dairy, so some butter. This is a really important ceremony because basically what the Fae do is they take the energy from this gift that you're giving them and use it in their day-to-day -day magic, which might be helping you keep your home safe and friendly. So I will always give them an offering at this time of year. The other thing I like to do at this time of year is to ensure that my hearth is clean and clear so I can perform my hearth ceremony. Now a hearth ceremony is really quite a simple ceremony. It is where you richly light your hearth at the beginning of this new season in order to light up those darker days and bring light to these winter months. So it's not a difficult ceremony to do. If you don't have a hearth or a fireplace, you can do this very simply with a candle ceremony. So on Halloween, you can do this with your friends and family if you want to, or simply by yourself. You will dedicate a candle to this ceremony. And this candle should be your finest and best. You know, I like to use 
beeswax, for example. This candle you can then light and it becomes your ritual flame to use to light any other candles that your guests might have and bring. You will use this candle and let it burn on your windowsill or in a safe place until the morning comes. It is important not to let the light die down on this night in order to make sure that you have light throughout the winter. So as part of my hearth ceremony, what I'm going to be doing is lighting my candle for Halloween and then using the flame from this to light my hearth. And I'll make sure that my hearth does not go out this night. And so that I definitely am going to have some light throughout the winter. I'm not a great winter person, as any of you might know. I find it a bit cold and a bit wet and a bit drear and I get a bit sad. I mean, the, you know, sad seasonal affected disorder. Although I try not to be because I do spend quite a bit of time outside. The Sabbath of Halloween itself, for witches anyway, is all about celebration. For celebrating the change of seasons and the use of this chaotic energy. And so I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be celebrating. And so, of course, I'm going to have some delicious drinks and some delicious food and maybe some toffee apples and some sparklers and lots of fireworks, maybe. For, for those people across the pond who don't know our customs, in the UK, we have fireworks around this time of year. It is about lighting up the darkness. So I will probably have fireworks on Halloween. The fourth thing that I'm going to be doing is having a bonfire. This is in recognition that this is simply an ancient Celtic fire festival. Everyone would like the bonfire. They take their ritual flame from that bonfire and light their hearths from it. Now, I'm not going to do that because, you know, it's, it's a bonfire and I don't want to burn down my house. But I am going to have a lot of friends over. This is what my bonfire currently looks like at the moment. And I love it. It's not quite finished yet. We've got to do a bit more building of it. I've got a lot of more you know, stuff to put on it. But, you know, it's getting there. It's going to be quite fun. We will have some sparklers. We will have bonfire food. I'm going to invite all my friends and family. And it doesn't matter that they do not follow the craft such as myself. What matters is that they are here together with me. We will be dancing around this bonfire. I'm going to make them. And I'm going to probably do a circle dance with the kids and the adults alike. For those who are non-believers, they will think this is quite a quaint and rather sweet traditional thing to do. But I will know that I am casting a circle of joy for this coming season. What more could I possibly want? Well, apart from to have some of my coven down. Now, sadly, all of my coven are actually not here because it's in the middle of half term. And so they're all on holiday, much to my distress. Apart from me, I'm not on holiday. I'm here. So I'm not going to be able to go with my coven, but this is not something I necessarily would do. Our coven would only really meet if we're doing a specific ritual. Welcoming in the new year is not necessarily a specific ritual. It's just a joyful occasion. The final thing I'm going to do, it is something that is incredibly traditional to do on this night of Samhain. And that is, of course, to define the future. Everybody knows that Samhain is the time when the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest. And not only can you speak to spirits, but you can delve into the future much clearer and much easier. Now, there's several ways that I can divine myself. I might be using my crystal ball. I do like a bit of crystal ball, actually. It's beautiful, isn't it, this particular one? Or I might use my copper bowl filled with water so that I can scry, and it will be moon water that I'm using. And, of course, I'll be using my beautiful rue and vervain cards for this. In fact, I have no idea how I'm going to divine this Halloween. I don't know how the muse is going to take me. You know, sometimes I think I want to do cards. Sometimes I want to do the crystal ball. Sometimes I want to scry into water. Sometimes I want to stare at candles. Like these ones here. These ones create this sort of you know, lumpy wax, which is great for candle divination. Do remember... The future is not set. It is not set in stone that this is what's going to happen. You have so much freedom of choice. It just means that the path you are on at the moment, this is what the future is going to look like. And if you don't like that future, you can change it.
you know, go on a different path, do something else. This is one of the reasons that the Christian faith does not like delving into the future, because it means they feel that you're beholden to that future. They don't deny that there is such thing as fortune telling. I mean, look at the Bible. That's quite a lot of that was fortune telling, wasn't it? And, and spells and witchcraft. And I love the Bible. It's full of witchcraft, in fact. Every single one of these is incredibly traditional. And so therefore, I will be doing this. And I have done these things many times before. And I do look forward to doing them many times in the future. What do you think? Do let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to go to Patreon and come and join us for our Coven meeting, which is happening next week. So uh, to about the 24th, I think it's about the 24th of this month. So there's still time for you to join and come and see what an actual coven meeting is like. It's good fun and I promise you'll learn a lot. And we're all terribly nice. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Mevelop. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it fills my heart with glee when people subscribe. And I would love it if you could do so. Um, I think my next video coming out is going to be the November video, so I'm not sure if I'm going to see you before Halloween, but if I don't, have a happy Halloween. <laughs>